Okay, folks, I'm going to call the meeting in order. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask for a moment of silence, please. Okay, thank you. I want to welcome everybody here. Everybody's watching or will be watching. Also, if you have your cell phone, if you could put them on vibrate or mute, it would be appreciated. Next thing is roll call. I'll be starting with Doug Smith today. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Stephen? Here. Commissioner Culberson? Here. Commissioner Cause? Here. And Mike Smith is here, I think. Okay. Public comment? I don't believe there was any. I'm signed up. Um, Mark's not here, so commissioners, do y'all have anything on administrative business as we go head on? I, I do. If you, go and, on. Uh, I know we got a lot on the agenda, and I got a few things. I did phone in last week. But first I want to talk about, you know, we did get our FEMA money. Uh, I had reached out to Representative Lance Neely uh, a couple weeks ago, and he said he would work on that and make some contacts, and we got it. Uh, I had reached out also earlier to Senator Tom Holland, month or so ago so I think it helps that uh, we're senators and representatives but I just really want to thank Lance because I no more and talk to him and he said I'll get on it the next day so thank you representative Neely uh, also I wanted to clarify a vote last week on uh, we had a business at lawn care business and I was on the phone so I you know I went out and looked at that business uh, I'm, I would have only voted for that being that they'd already have a plan, they only wanted a year, and they're moving to a commercial lot which joins the industrial park. I know they were trying to get into the industrial park and that didn't work out. But uh, the folks that did have complaints, they had legitimate complaints. I went out there. If you go west of that business, the grass grows up down the middle of the road. Yeah. East of the business, it's nothing but powdery dust. So there was a lot of traffic. And my concern with that business was they don't live there. They just bought a piece of property and started their business out there. And I know we don't have anything in place for people who violate that other than doubling the permit fee. Uh, but uh, I, I am glad to see it's a, it's a very successful business, and they are going to a commercial lot in town. And, but it still it wasn't handled you know, from the start. It was in violation from the start. Yeah. But, and I'd like to see us be able to streamline these businesses, being able to get them into commercial lots and or in the industrial park, uh, because we need these businesses. Yeah. But we don't need them like that in the middle of a residential area where they don't live. But I voted for, yes, and I uh, just wanted to you know clarify my vote. And also... Um, we had an email a um, week or two ago about uh, the contractor on the Eagle Crossing project where they're supposed to put in a slurry seal. Right. Uh, I had looked at that. I thought it was done, uh, and then I was told it was not done yet. So I didn't know if uh, what how the board felt about that, having another opinion on that. Uh, or have them look at it again, being how the the subdivision is built out. Uh, you know, the concrete trucks, the lumber trucks, everything packed the road down good. And there's no loose uh, asphalt anymore. But I know we made, uh, Olson gave an opinion and we came up with a different solution. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Knoll. Uh, we came up with a uh, slurry other than Yes, yeah, so when Olson reviewed the uh, roadway initially, they made us a, a recommendation of a two-inch overlay for the right. entirety of the subdivision. Uh, we ended up coming to a compromise on that and felt that there was uh, a slurry seal, and we got some bids and accepted one from Vance Brothers. It was 
given on behalf of the developers, and they've placed a cash bond on the uh, cost of that. Vance Brothers had stated in their quote that they had provided uh, the developer that they did not want to do that until 60% of the homes were built so it wouldn't peel up, and they were worried about some of the concrete trucks and different construction activities ongoing during the cure period of that uh, slurry seal. So now that the homes, 60% uh, of the homes or more have been built, um, now it's time move forward with that or, or direct staff to do that in a different way, we can uh, do that as you guys desire. So what would an alternative be? We really need to put it on the agenda if we're going to talk about it or make any decision. Well, if we've got a commissioner that wants to discuss it again, I don't have any problem putting that down next week. Bill, can we address that? Yeah, we can discuss it. I mean, yeah. I'll speak to Mark about it when he returns. Yeah, give us our options. Yeah, give us, go back and let's talk about that. It's all right. The commissioner's going to put that up. Like I said, I don't know if any of you all... Yeah, I'd like to take another second mm -hmm. look that you said that, Doug. Okay, the commissioners will bring it back. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Thank you Doug. No, that's all I have. Sorry I took up so much time. That's all right. Lance, we been, I wouldn't have believed it until I saw the check, so thank you for working that on FEMA. I think sometimes work a little slow. Do the other commissioner have anything to say before I moved on? Okay, let's go into a consent agenda. Is there any items that need to be purchased? I mean purchased. <laughs> Pulled from the <laughs> consent agenda that's all being purchased. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? I'll call the roll. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stephen? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Aye. Commissioner Cause? Aye. And I vote aye also. Formal ward action. Need a motion to adjourn as a board of county commissioners and convene as a board of county canvassers. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stephen? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Aye. Commissioner Cause? Aye. And I vote aye. All right. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. And, morning. Um, thank you. August 2nd, 2022, we had our primary election for the state of Kansas, Leavenworth County. Uh, it was a very successful election with a 47% uh, turnout. With several of our precincts uh, reaching over 55 percent, one at 56 percent, which for a primary um, was hugely successful. So, as I mentioned last week, um, couldn't have done it without uh, the Leavenworth County staff and our election workers. So today we're here to um, certify that election. And uh, there are a few things that we need to talk about. We had 24,590 votes cast in Leavenworth County. Uh, we had 7,726 Democrat votes cast. We had 12,770 Republican votes cast. And we had 4,094 uh, unaffiliated votes cast. Uh, then we had five blank ballots. So we also in the county, um, our election consisted of national offices, state offices, county offices, township offices, and precinct committee people. Precinct committee people, um, this is not a nomination. This is their actual election. They are um, elected in August every two years. Each of the um, parties send in um, candidates for um, a Republican precinct man, a Republican precinct woman, a Democrat precinct man, and a Democrat precinct woman. We had some write-ins, which we will talk about in um, a few minutes. But um, I did want to mention that in Lansing Ward 3, Precinct Committee Man, uh, there was a candidate, candidate inadvertently put on that we believed was Republican. His form was turned in that he was Republican, but he was unaffiliated. It was too late. This was the last day it was turned in. but. Anyway, he was inadvertently put on 
and was not qualified to hold that office due to uh, <coughs> being a Republican candidate. I have um, worked with counsel. I've worked with the Secretary of State's office. I talked to the Republican State Party and do have an email from them um, that I received last night about 5 o'clock that um, if it's all right, I will just read yeah, that ahead. to the go commission. Ahead. This email is a follow-up to a phone conversation we had prior to the election. Because candidate Jeff Marshall does not meet the requirements to be a Republican committee man, viva the statute or the Republican Party rules, and because that error was discovered too late to remove him from the ballot, we are requesting that all votes cast for him be determined to be null and void. This candidate could not be seated in this office, he is ineligible to serve. Accordingly, we are requesting that the candidate on the ballot who met the requirements by statute and Republican Party rules and who received the most votes as an eligible candidate be declared the winner for the Republican Party office. If you have any questions or need additional information, please let me know. Who wrote that? Uh, Cheryl Reynolds, who is the second chair, second district chair, plus she is the treasurer for the entire state party. Um, the candidate, the other candidate that filed for that position is uh, Mr. Rhett Rogers. If you look at statute, uh, precinct committee people do not really fall under some of the statute rules, and and I realize this in working with Clay Barker with the Secretary of State's office, and he also used to be chair of the state party. Um, precinct committee people follow the rules set by the party, and so in following the guide or the this email and the guidance I received, um, I will put Rhett Rogers into the precinct committee man position for Lansing Ward 3. So I wanted to um, talk about that. Let me ask you a question on that. Yes. Just clarification. <clears throat> I understand what you said. It's a shame that it's worked out this way. But the, the people, the district or the pe folks involved in this locally aren't involved or aren't nominating one since one is not valid? I'm just going by the guidance I received. I did speak with Mr. Marshall, and he does not uh, want to hold that office. I mean, I spoke to him even before the election. So I'm just, uh, you are the Board of Canvassers. Uh, I'm going to take the recommendation um, from the party the state party, and so that would be my recommendation to you as the board of canvassers. Um, did uh, what was the actual vote on the? Mr. Marshall did um, win that race. The numbers were oh, like he received. I don't. I don't have that number right here. He received Mr. Marshall around two hundred and fifty. And Mr. Rogers received like 179. Mr. Marshall's what did receive more votes than Mr. Rogers, and that's why I went ahead and pursued further guidance um, from the Secretary of State's office and the Repub State Republican Party. I just I just got a question, and I'm, I'm learning this, so bear with me. If we had someone that had dropped out of a race. Uh, in the middle or went and did something else, how would that position have been filled? Well, that's a little different because, as I said, the precinct committee positions fall under party rules. And um, so you would, if you had a national, state, county, uh, you would follow the um, Statutes as far as fulfilling a vacancy. 
But in this case, we had an ineligible candidate. Is that the? He was ineligible. Okay. Commissioners, anything else on this? That did, how did this happen as far as in your office? Was it just like somebody just had an oversight? They didn't check the roles? It was, um, yeah, that's really what it was. I take the responsibility for this. I have um, the form was turned in Republican, but the roles were not adequately checked. So I, I take full responsibility um, for this occurring in this precinct position. I don't really see my opinion. I'm just. In my opinion, I don't see we have any choice since the state Republican Party has issued their decision uh, because we don't make the state Republican Party rules. That's their rules, and all we do is comply with them. I think as the Board of Canvassers, we need to go ahead and certify Brett Rogers. I mean, I think that's our only – I don't think we have an option. I don't either. David? <clears throat> Well, Mr. Chairman, the state statutes, uh, there are state statutes that deal with this. There are state statutes that deal with the contests of elections. However, as uh, your county clerk and election officer with decades of experience has recited to you, she checked with the Secretary of State's office and was advised that due to the fact that in their interpretation, uh, these uh, the election for precinct committee person, while conducted in the public election forum, is really a party matter. And if their opinion is that the party rules control and that the party determination is the primary factor, then I defer to that decision and that opinion. Certainly it can be argued that uh, there's a more formal process to go into, but I'd like to point out that at the very conclusion of the uh, statutory mechanism for the contest of elections, basically stays a, it goes to the district court the district court may invalidate the election. It may issue the certificate to the person it feels is entitled to the uh, office, may call for a special election, well, may make such other orders as the court deems appropriate. So the law recognizes there's a great deal of latitude that comes into these uh, matters. And while you could argue in a formalistic fashion that there's a, a more formal process to follow, I think the determination by the Office of the Secretary of State and the State Republican Party is controlling. Okay. And the alternative, if there was an alternative, would be that it just the, the seat just goes open. Yes, or you, there's a contest to the election. Right. But if somebody wanted to challenge it, I'm understanding, and they, they could wait to walk across the street. Yes. Okay. Anything Do we else? need to make a motion on that, or is that just we'll no, this formal? Just, just be part of part. certifying the election. At the very I end. just um, wanted to, well, it was my responsibility and obligation to let the board know um, what occurred in the position of precinct committee man Lansing Ward 3. Okay. Mr. Marshall didn't want the position, so. That, no. Okay, go ahead. So um, the other thing that uh, we did receive some write-ins that were um, received enough votes. As a precinct committee person, if, since this is the election of that position, if someone received five write-ins or more, they were uh, duly elected to the position. We had in... Um, Sherman Township Precinct Committee Man David Hicks received enough votes, and so he will be part of the certification. Um, for Republican <laughs> Committee Woman, Roberta Hicks received enough, so they will be part of the certification. In Reno West Precinct, uh, Republican Committee Man Jim Carlskint received enough votes. And Republican Committee Woman D. Carl Skint received enough. No, uh, so they were some write in candidates that received enough votes. Then in Stranger Township, Republican Committee Woman Paula McNerney received enough votes. So these people will also, these write in candidates, will be part of the certification of um, the August 2nd election. 
We also had vacancies in um, a couple of township boards. And um, we had, um, in Alexandria Township, David Price received enough votes to be um, move on to the general election. So he will be um, also, it, that was just a nomination, but he will um, move on then to the general election. That's as a Republican. As, as a Republican, Republican yeah. yes. The other one that received enough that we had a vacancy in is in uh, Reno Township, and no one had filed for that position. Kerry Putoff currently holds that position, and he did receive enough votes to move on to the general election. So his name will be on the ballot. Then that brings us to the provisional ballots. We had 446 provisional ballots cast during the um, election, of which I recommend being qualified 257, with 189 being rejected. I will say, in the past, we don't normally see this high of a number of uh, provisional ballots being rejected. But I believe that with the constitutional amendment question on the ballot, it generated so much interest. And we had in the county 126 people come to the polling places that were never registered. Now, part of the provisional ballot um, process is to get them registered. So they will be registered um, for future elections. But I cannot recommend qualifications due to um, some statutes and rules and regulations set out by the Secretary of State's office that if someone was never registered and they came to vote, that that provisional um, would not be qualified or me recommending being qualified for this election. So you can see out of the 189, which I do think is high, 126 of them were never registered. Other reasons we had were um, 40 of our people that voted um, were registered as one party and wanted to vote the other party. So say they were Democratic and wanted to vote Republican. This is not um, an allowable uh, provisional ballot reason to be qualified um, in any kind of a primary. So that was the majority of the reasons for uh, non -qual or me recommending non-qualification there. Does anyone have any questions on anything that I have presented this morning before we look at counting those provisional ballots? Commissioner, go ahead, Mike. Um, the distribution of those 257 ballots throughout the county, was it, was it fairly equal or was it heavier in Leavenworth uh, well, or... As part of the canvas, we don't know yet. I will okay. go down and count those now because I have to um, present to you only my recommendations, and then you have to move forward with, uh, ask, you know, um, asking me to go ahead and count those provisionals as accepted. That's just part of the Board of Canvassers. So when I come back up, we will know how that went. And as all of you are aware, we have a highly contested state treasurer race between um, Karen, or Karen, Karen Tyson, Tyson and Steve Johnson. Yeah. Uh, the last I looked, 
There was 375 vote difference out of 314,000 votes. Uh, those candidates, we've been notified that there is a high probability of a statewide recount. Um, yesterday, um, I had to turn in an estimate on what it would cost in Leavenworth County to hold um, uh, this county doing a countywide recount. Uh, that decision must be made by 5 o'clock Friday afternoon. Even though there will still be some counties, for instance, Johnson County, that will not even have their canvas until Monday. But those candidates have that Friday deadline to uh, let the Secretary of State's office um, know if they want to have a statewide recount. When a candidate for a state office requests a recount, they can decide. They don't have to do it statewide. They can pick um, certain counties. Say they can pick 50 out of the 105 counties. They can choose to have it be uh, a manual count, or they can choose to um, have it by the machine count. So that is something um, left up to the candidate. I will say in Leavenworth County, we had our audit last Friday and had no disparities. Everything was um, exactly the way um, our equipment counted it. We, uh, and because of the closeness of the state treasurer's race, each county was, were required to do 10% of the precincts for that state treasurer's race on top of the other offices that we were required to audit. So Leavenworth County has 55 precincts, so we took six of those, um, random selection, and hand counted um, those six precincts for state treasurer. And there was no disparity um, at all. We also did the constitutional amendment. We did uh, House District 41 Democrat. We did Republican Governor. We did uh, Commissioner Stevens' 5th District County Commission race. And we did the State Treasurer. So um, we ended up doing 10 precincts, 10 or 11 precincts in the county <coughs> by manual count. Does anyone have any questions on that? Or the public, if you guys have any questions. Is there a cost if you do a recount? Does the There is candidate... a cost, but the cost is um, has to be paid for by the candidate requesting it. In a general election, if there is a race within 2%, then the state picks up that cost. But that is not... Um, the way it is in a primary election, the candidate has to pick up the cost. So I've given you a lot of information. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, certainly I'm here to answer those. Otherwise, um, I'll let you resume as Board of County Commissioners. I'll go down and count those ballots and I'm come up you, with new counts. Before you come back up. Yeah. How much time will you time. need? Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, sorry, right. It will take me about. Oh, I don't know. Thirty minutes, probably. Well, you can stall. A recess. You had a recess. Yeah. I'll do it as quick as I can. Talk. It may be. We can have, we've got a lot of people in this room that could talk. <coughs> Politicians. <laughs> so. Uh, so. Um, I just I'll want to thank and you and your staff yeah. for the, the last, you know, from July on, what's your staff and all the election workers and everything that had to be done, you know, with all our uh, notices that had to be sent out. I really think you guys really went above and beyond. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And, uh, I mean, I, I see what you do every day. I mean, I know the public doesn't. But, 
I mean, I know we all know what's going on and how, how, what the workload was in the last few months. I say large thank prime, you. large oh, prime. Well, thank you guys. Okay, right, as, well, a let me, as, as let a chair, let me go do this, and I will hurry as quick as not, I can. As a chairperson, we're going to take a thirty second, thirty second, thirty minute Mike. recess, and we'll convene when you come back up here. Okay. All right. Mike. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to be another twenty or thirty minutes before they do that. So we're going to go ahead and um, to adjourn the board of county commissioners, and we'll reconvene as soon as we get uh, her back up here with those numbers for us. So. Thank you. As the board of county canvassers. Hold on. Oh, wait. There, there it is. Right. Right. Move that we adjourn as the board of county canvassers. Second. Motion second. second. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Stephen? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. I vote aye. Okay. Bill, consider a motion to improve the land acquisition policy. Commissioners, today for your consideration is a proposed policy that amends our current land acquisition policy and aligns it with the policies uh, directly outlined by KDOT acquisition of real property uh, for Kansas highways, roads, streets, and bridges, current edition. And it's also in uh, references and is in accordance with the Uniform Act. Federal Regulation CFR Title 49 Part 24 that are required for all federally funded projects. And so we wanted to specifically cite those FHWA um, requirements for funding and also KDOTs. So therefore, we, uh, when asked about our acquisition policy, that we can move forward with any project uh, as necessary. So as we discussed previously, um, have a minimum compensation that's outlined within this, and it does uh, outline a committee uh, of different county staff that can look at different situations as needed uh, and make a decision within the outlines uh, of the KDOT manual. If you have any questions about the policy, I'd be happy to try to answer them. And by adopting this policy, that may help us uh, get some matching funds. By following the KDOT policy, what we're talking about. Well, I don't know if it'll ha help us necessarily get any funding, but um, I think it will, will provide a path that we can um, work with landowners within the policies of KDOT uh, in order to try to avoid uh, yeah. condemnations. Uh, previously, we were still within funding guidelines, but it was a very stringent po policy when it came to. Uh, the availability to work within the current county policy. Yeah, it, it gave a lot, the open gave them flexibility. We've talked about this before. Yep. It's definitely a step in the right direction because when we take people's land, we need to take care of them too. And I think this gives us an opportunity to negotiate when, as we're going down the road on some things that you've placed in here that the county commissioners have spoken on. Is yes. that correct, Bill? Yes, that's correct. And you did say that if uh, if if you had a policy where they donate easements, that that is in conflict with the KDOT rules? Uh, it's not necessarily in conflict with the KDOT rules, but it is more expensive to the county than the minimum payment would be. Because with the donation, you have to provide an appraisal for taxation purposes. And so therefore, it would actually be more cost beneficial to the county to be able to purchase a property uh, than in many cases than it would be to go through the proper appraisal process in order to provide the tax documentation that you need in order to uh, take a donation. Yeah, then that's I want to get that out there because we did discuss that in our work session that, that that's why we had to set the minimum. Yeah, it sounds weird. Free isn't free. Right. Free is more expensive. Than yeah. Free. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to follow the Constitution of the United States. It takes private property for public use without fair compensation. That's right. Takings clause. Yep. I think we're on the road that. Anybody have any other questions for him, Bill? No. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the new uh, amended land acquisition policy. Do I need to list the section or anything? I'll second. No, I don't think so, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Got a motion and second. Any discussion on it? I think we've talked that one. Uh, Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Stevens? Aye. Commissioner Culberson? Aye. 
and Mr. Collins. Aye. And I'll be voting aye. Okay, present discussions. We had nobody on the list. We'll talk to them. It's okay, Bill. We approved it. County commissioners, and we'll start with you, Doug Smith. Uh, I got Mason City Council tonight. Uh, plan on uh, attending the beef improvement uh, dinner and presentation on Saturday night at Murfield Farms. And I think that's about all I got this week. Thank you, Doug. Commissioner Steven? Uh, meeting with the uh, Lisa from LCDC this afternoon at 2 to discuss several issues. That's good. Anything else, Mike? That's it. Commissioner Culberson? I uh, attended the Lemoore City Council meeting last night, and I thought I would mention something to y'all because there's a gentleman probably going to come to us and ask us this anyway, so it's food for thought. You can start mulling it over before he comes in. The golf course on Eisenhower Road is evidently closing. Um, so the gentleman showed up at the city council meeting last night asking if possibly Lansing City, Lemoore City, and the county might entertain a joint venture uh, running a golf course. Um, there's 15 golf courses across the state of Kansas that are locally, governmentally operated, owned and operated. Um, so it's it's a possibility. So it's something to think about. My yeah, problem. Jeff, can I speak on that just one second? Fifteen years ago, um, country club as we know them nowadays are not the same as they were years ago. So they came to the city of Lansing, asking uh, the city administrator at the time, asking if we were going to purchase. What are you going to purchase in it? We did our due diligence, came out, looked at them, met with the board members, um, and made them an offer. Uh, a few days later, this company came in, and. Uh, I apparently gave them a higher bid. The point I'm trying to make is Lansing at that time was going to buy it and make it a quality of life issue. So I don't know how, I can't speak for them, but I don't know how high they're going to be receptive because price tags are a lot higher than they were uh, now than they were la uh, back then. I think David was even on, on the council and something like that. So I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm not even saying we, I don't know what Lansing's going to do. But I'm a little frustrated that we, we went down the road 15 years ago and could have had it paid for by now mm -hmm. when I was with Lansing. And this I just want to say, you hit it right on the head. You know, uh, people think about why would we want to be in the golf course business. And that's exactly right. I mean, quality of life uh, goes hand in hand with economic development. So, you know, you attract people, that attracts business, Houses and so on and so stuff. forth, housing, et cetera. The problem is it's hard to think about uh, things like this in you know, the bleak times we're in when we can't afford to hire enough help you know, or pay for, uh, adequately pay for you know, roads and bridges and fund essential projects and services. So this is just a bad timing for David, you have a comment on the things like this. Chairman Smith, uh, his rendition is accurate. I was on the board of directors of the country club when the city of Lansing, and it was in the person of... Uh, Chairman Smith and the former Mayor Bernard uh, basically made an offer that the city of Lansing would take the country club property, uh, make uh, substantial improvements to it, and operate it as a municipal uh, facility, both an aquatic center and a golf course. Uh, personally, I found that to be an extremely attractive offer and did advocate for it, but the other members of the board of directors turned it down, transferred ownership of the property to Great Life, now, Great Life evidently uh, is requesting a divestment of their investment uh, in the form of uh, basically public monies. I would caution this board about considering that uh, golf courses are very expensive to maintain. The, you have no guaranteed stream of income. Uh, there are a great number of golf courses in the metropolitan area that you would essentially be competing with to include uh, other Great Life golf courses. So. Certainly, you could consider that, but I would urge you to view it, quite frankly, with skepticism. Mike? Uh, unless it was going to put us in the black, absolutely not. I don't think the government should be involved. If it's going to no. be put in the black, why would a private <laughs> exactly. person uh, make That's the money off of it? And uh, I, this is taxpayer money we're talking about. We're not investors. Right. Um, I'm sure the land will sell quickly and because they just put sewer lines through it. 
So right. and then if, if, you, if you go back to our comprehensive plan, nobody wanted a golf course. They wanted parks and trails. Yep. And, you know, that's kind of the can't. I mean, that's who we're elected by. Golf courses are great, but uh, it's really something for the private sector. Well, I don't think I know some cities that have them. Um, also, Waterbury runs theirs like that, and they they don't expect to make money. But when the county take them or something like that, to me, that's a different picture, and I I can't support that. Now, if the school district wants to take it over for the golf team, it's a different deal. Still taxpayer dollars. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> it's not going to be on my vote, though. No, no, no. Well, Jeff, I, I mean, I'm just telling you, I don't think it's okay. a good. We'd idea. have to hear a lot of specifics. <laughs> You don't need anything else taken off the tax. Jeff, you glad you brought that up? Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> and that was another thing. It's taken off the tax. Rate. Nothing else can be We don't taken need anything taken off the tax. Off the tax rate. That's right. Not in our county, anyway. That's right. Okay. We have enough things. Okay, thank you, Jeff, for firing up the group. Vicki, you're next. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Also, last week I uh, was in Salt Lake City for the uh, transit uh, board of directors. Uh, training and that was very informative and then on Monday morning uh, Todd Thompson and I attended the uh, international flag ceremony which was really very neat then another transit authority meeting Monday afternoon and um, Frank White the third was named during at following that meeting as the interim CEO of the KCATA uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer um, until a new CEO can be identified. And um, yesterday I participated in the uh, mental health uh, task force meeting at the guidance center. Thank you, Vic. I just have a few things. Um, they, they keep putting me off. I guess they don't want me don't want me there, Pat, and the rest of you. But the Rotary Club has asked me to come speak on in November. So I'm going to get with you so update some of the things we have. Um, last Friday I had lunch with the city administrator in Lansing just to keep up on things, keep the communication open so we all can help each other. If you haven't had a chance to look at uh, Mayor Bernard's Park, it's going out on 4-H Road. There's uh, a, lot of, a lot of good things that are happening to it. I was hoping I could see lights out there before I, my time was up here on Earth and they started putting in the poles, so I was glad to see that. And it's still my understanding that the Lansing is going to be placing the uh, thing. It's not quite a half-cent sales tax on the November um, election for for looking at a pool, so all the voters will have the opportunity to decide which way they want to go with that. That being said, I want a motion to adjourn as a board of county commissioners and convene as a board of county canvassers. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Stephen. Aye. Mr. Culberson. Aye. Mr. Cause. Aye. And I vote aye. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we went down, opened up the provisionals that we considered qualified, um, had 257, as I had uh, stated earlier. Ran those through, so our totals did go up to 24,847 uh, qualified votes. Um, Looking at the individual races, the 257 did not make any difference with any of the races in um, Leavenworth County. We'll turn this in immediately. Um, our new numbers in to the Secretary of State um, today, uh, specifically for the state treasurer race. So um, each day those totals can change with counties having um, their canvases. Did the state treasurers, did, how did that? Did, about half and half. About half and half. Okay. What we need to know. Anybody else here? Uh, Go ahead, Doug. So I would just uh, need to have the election certified by the Board of County Kansas. Yeah, request. David, we had a request for someone to speak at this. What? Mr. Chairman, the purpose of the Board of Canvassers is to hear a report from the election officer, review provisional ballots, and certify the election. It is not a public hearing, and I would caution you against allowing public speaking, not out of disrespect to any proposed speaker, but I think it turns what should be a very formalized process into a potentially a contentious forum. 
I don't think it, you should uh, follow that path. Okay. Um, with that being said, that being said, consider a motion to accept the vote from the August 2nd, 2022 primary election. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Stephen? Aye. Mr. Coberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to bring up uh, this report and have each of you sign it, please. Jeff, you didn't have to take the whole page. <laughs> I left the first line open. I think so. I think you make it look so nice. Even, even at the grocery store. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Second, okay. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Stevens? Aye. Mr. Culberson? Aye. Mr. Cause? Aye. I vote aye. We are adjourned. Thanks, folks, for attending. Thank you. Do we need to adjourn as the Fort County Commission? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. no, we got to go. Yeah. Go. I'm go. sorry. I made a mistake here. <laughs> Excuse me one second. Motion to adjourn as the Fort County Commissioners. Second. Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Yes, we are.